Hello everybody, I am just Lance and I would like to welcome you all back for another video. And, as promised, today in this video we're going to be using the Schick Type A Repeating Razor. Um, the paperwork I got on it from one moment. Um, my girlfriend and I cannot remember where we got what store on Etsy. She got the Schick Type A Repeating Razor. Um, but she got it there. In case you didn't see the last video, you're not familiar with one of these razors. Type A is the only one with a cap. When it's together, it looks like a big ass magic marker. Pull the cap off. This is a plunger. I'm not going to go ahead and inject a fresh blade because I don't want to draw it fall somewhere where I can't get to it. But you pull it down, you push it up, and it pushes the old blade up, out, and injects a fresh one. And then you just sit there. Um, and you rotate it up like so in the T position and you're ready to shave. It's the first this model is from 19 yeah, I said 1931 so it's a A1, A4 I believe. The brush we're going to be using tonight is my AP Shave Co 24 mm tuxedo not in the AP Shave Co ruby ripple handle. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful um brush. Um, got that last Valentine's Day. This razor and three other razors. If you want to see what those razors are, if you didn't see it, check out my last video. Anyways, um, the soap is going to be, I believe it is a TSF soap, and it is BFF. That's, I don't know if he's right way up or sideways. That's Razor Rock Joe's mug there. And this is his friend, artisan friend over in Italy that makes this soap. Smell, yeah, the scent is slightly perfumey. I got that a couple of Christmases ago. It's great soap. So, and the blade, I'm not sure if it's a Persona or a Schick injector blade. It's either one. Um, so, we'll just go ahead and see how it does. My knowledge, the razor came shave ready with all brand new blades put into it. If you get one and you have no idea how to load it, whether it's a type A, B, or C, um, Matt Pasarsic, just, just look, do a, a YouTube search on loading Schick repeating razor. And there's a couple of videos out there by a couple of different guys. Matt Pisarsic, Razor Emporium, does a real good video. It's about nine, ten minutes long where he shows how to open up and load all three types of the Schick repeaters. Let me wet my face. I've been looking you know, I've been wanting one of these repeaters for a very long time, ever since I learned about them. It was one of those things as a wet shaver, you see it and you're like, that's cool, I gotta get one. So, but my girlfriend, she, Definitely surprised me this year with Valentine's gifts. Um, so, but yeah, we went up to Big Bear and um, enjoyed the snow for a few days. Um, 
I think the coldest it got while we were there was 17 degrees. Um, a friend of ours, the one that rented the cabin and everything, or basically the going at California celebration, so to speak. Um, invited us, some other friends, family members, so. But he said he stepped outside to have a cigarette. Um, first night he got there. And um, it was seven degrees. Not 17, not 70, but 7. 7 degrees above zero. Big Bear Lake was completely frozen over. At least that's how it looked to my girlfriend. On the ride up, one of our snow chains One of our brand new snow chains broke. The chains were supposed to be made of hardened steel. I'm no metallurgist. But I do know it's a little unusual when hardened steel chains, snow chains, are all one color and then the hook is a different color. Just so flew float over. So we ended up going the rest of the way up the road on cables, I mean on one chain, and uh, got up to the um, arrowhead, I believe it was. And luckily there was a Napa Napa that was still open with the grain first pass. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. But, um, he sold us cables, which, if you don't drive in the snow and ice that much, And you just need chains or whatever, rarely, I recommend get cables. They weigh literally a fraction of what a chain does. And they're very simple to put on. Chains you have to drive up one, you know, you got basically drape them over your tires. You know, and then drive on to them, and, or lay them out and drive on to them. Oh yeah, this is going through the whiskers real nice. But, um, I'm loving this razor. And then you gotta reach behind and... Hook it. And then you go ahead, and then you got it. In front, you got this one thing, and you got to put it in and hook it, and make sure they're on the right way. Which we were told by the guys inspecting the chains and charging 50 bucks a pop to put them on. He didn't want to pay that. We had them on backwards at first. So, we got them on. But the cables, you got, you don't have to drive on to them for one. You just wrap it around behind. 
put it through the right adjuster or clip it to the right adjusting adjuster loop or whatever then do basically do the adjuster in the front and then you got this rubber rubber ring with six plus heavy duty plastic hooks and you just go around doop, 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 the six cables where it comes through and I mean so much easier so if you don't have to drive in the snow and ice that much get cables if you ever want to go need, need them they're more expensive than chains but in the end they're so worth it um, I've got like three days growth um, <laughs> my son it's the first time he's ever been in real heavy snow um, he went ahead and went down where people were sledding I didn't because I didn't want to crash um, I'm too old to crash it hurts but uh, um, the kids were having fun and my son five years old he just turned five the 31st of last month um, so he wanted to go solo so to speak he went down the first time went down totally straight and then there was this hump at the end down at the bottom that he got to and he Basically, our friend watched himself past his head. Um, my son hits, and my son was like, oh no. My girlfriend's like, oh no, and I'm all one, she's all, you got air. But he went ahead, and when he went up, he leaned back, so he didn't like nose down. And then when he hit, he just kind of let the impact kind of rock him forwards. And he gets off. He's like, Mom, Dad, you see what I did? I want to go again. So, it was, it was cool. My guide dog, Herbie, second pass across the grain. My guide dog, Herbie, does not like snow. Um, yeah. But, we... All had a nice time up there. And then we kinda went a separate route that our friends did. And our friend's sister was my girlfriend, me, our friend from one of our friends from Riverside, and uh, my son, all in our Kia minivan. And we went down Highway 38 because we saw that the 330, which leads up in there to Big Bear from San Bernardino, was backed up at an hour and something wait. So. We didn't want to go that way. And, um, GPS took us down the 38. And when we were going down, my girlfriend's like, man, she glances down at her GPS real quick and she's, man, am I glad that we took this way? Because she watched all of a sudden. Or we was getting ready. Anyway, so somehow. I forget if it was a junction or whatever. But anyways, looked on the thing. And when it was showing the possible routes. Yeah, when it was showing the possible routes down off the mountain to pick from she went ahead and she saw the 18 all of a sudden back up 
she's like, oh, okay, well, we'll go down the 38th. So she chose that, and then we went down the 38th. Well, sorry, guys, had to rinse off. So, turns out, we get back to our friend's house in Riverside, and one of our friends in the group of three that headed out in the big old Ford Explorer calls up and says, we got in an accident. We've been hit by a car. Um, luckily, no one was hurt. Just bruises and banged up a little bit. Um, and then there was a big hassle with them getting their stuff out of the vehicle because they went and tow it down the rest of the way down the mountain. Um, towed it back up into Big Bear. So the next day, my girlfriend drove them up to Big Bear so they could get all their stuff because the insurance company said, I'm totaling it out. We're totaling it out. So they go up to get their stuff. And they come down. And me and my girlfriend's all, yeah, we're going to have to leave tomorrow morning by this time. So we could take care of some business and get home so our son could go to school the next day. Well, I get woke up to my dog Herbie barking. And I'm like, I thought it was our friend's gardener. Our gardeners. And, um, it was some lady. She's all, whose van is this out here? Mine? Oh, I just ran into it. So, I'm like, what? Oh, damn. So I tell my girlfriend, I get her up against the grain. This thing is just, but this, this type A is just doing a phenomenal job. The soap's doing really good. So, it's not that strong scent-wise, but it's a really good soap. I like it. Um... But yeah, this, this Type A is just, it's a nice razor. It's a really, really nice one. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, it's cool. I like it. But, um, luckily, nobody was hurt. And the only damage, well, her car was worse shaped than our man. Um, yeah, this, it's pretty flat here on the face of it, so it's not that hard to figure out the angle. But, um, it's almost, almost straight out, as you can see. But, um, luckily nobody got hurt. The lady, she could have just drove away. If she wanted it to be a douche weasel. She could have. But she didn't. She came, she admitted it. And no. Uh, so my girlfriend and her exchanged info info. No. Uh, her insurance company. This is a really smooth shaver too. I like it. Um, but they picked our car up today. There in Riverside. Or in Menifee. Um, I was going to take it to their Paris facility, Paris, California facility. Um, can't believe I actually put uh, California. No, they towed it across the Atlantic to Paris, France. Um, it's on the English Channel. Um, but, anyways. 
Then it's going to take you to Paris. No. And that was completely booked up. I guess a lot of people are running into each other. I don't know. Um, but they took it out to their Loma Linda facility and they should start working on it tomorrow or the next day. But the insurance company sprang for a Dodge Caravan minivan, which was cool because, you know, we use a minivan um, to get us, you know, unlimited miles. All we got to do is pay for the gas. Now, I asked, I actually called Matt Pasarsic and asked him if there's any way you can take a blade out of these. So, if you're not a big fan of leaving your blades in razors, which I'm not, and you use one of these, with an injector, you can just put the key in and, you know, and, you know push it out, and you're good. Well... Or take a you know small screwdriver or something and you're good you can't do that with these so what he said you do with these when you're done using them to make sure because the head's brass so there shouldn't be any rusting issues so to speak just take Dip the head down in some rum and alcohol. And I'm just going to let it set upside down in my Art of Shaving Copper Muck. Let you do that and then uh, let it dry good and then put it away. So, yeah, that's the shave. God, that thing got me close. I'm really, really happy with that. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and cut away here. Do the dome with a lovely disposable. And then I'll be back for the, for the um, post shave. See you in a minute. Hey, guys. Anyways, yeah, like I said, that was an absolutely awesome shave. Um... I would definitely, definitely have to say that this is one awesome razor, the 1931 Type A4 Schick Repeating Razor. Get a chance to get one, and you like injectors, uh, get it, get it, you can't go wrong. Um, it was picked up on Etsy. I'll let you know the name of the store on Etsy when I remember, you know, um, in the next video. Anyways, so let's go ahead, oh yeah, face, I have no irritation, no cuts, no nicks, no weepers, no creepers. Absolutely beautiful. Um, not quite as close as some of my other razors, but I like it. And the razor's not I mean, isn't bulky or heavy or anything like that. So that's the nice thing. So we'll go ahead, do witch hazel. My noggin is pretty smooth because of the disposable. Get two passes, one this way, one that way. So. My girlfriend, when, you know, she said, you know, you don't want to know how much it costs. She got it on her credit card. She's going to 
work extra, you know, work extra to pay it off, but she knows I've been wanting one for a while, so she ended up getting it. We saw on Etsy a Type B repeating razor for in good shape, really good shape, for 40 something dollars, but had one problem. The part inside the handle where you put the blades in, where you loaded the blades in, in the plunger part, was missing. Um, and the person was like, in the description said, still a great shaver, loaded, you know, just load it by hand, basically. I'm like, I'm telling my girl, no. And she's all, would you be interested in a type A injector? And I went, or a type A repeater? And I'm like, uh, I'd be interested in any of the repeater razors. I had no idea she was going to buy the dang thing. I thought she might, but she's all, man, that's expensive. So I'm like, okay, that's out. But then she tells me, she's all, be on the lookout. We're going to have some packages coming. I'm like, well, what'd you do? And she went, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hang on, guys. I'm looking for my aftershave. Where the hell did I put it? Ah, here it is. The aftershave is Skin Bracer by Menin. But, um, she's like, oh, no, no, no. I just ended up going ahead and getting myself something and, and um, getting something for you. And I'm like, what? What do you mean you got something for me? She went, don't worry about it. So, and then I get the repeater and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. This is beautiful. Thank you, baby. And at first I didn't know what it was because I can't see one. So I'm like, is this a Durham duplex? You know, I never messed with one. I seen one uh, with the handle like a DE. Um, she's all known. And I'm like, wait, that, that's an injector blade, is it? A uh, repeater? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow. So, anyway, that is the shave. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, I'm looking forward to going ahead and using the double edge open comb that I showed in my last video. The world's best safety razor. We're going to put that to the test in the next video. And then once I get that absolutely beautiful Senator, which I believe is a rhodium plate, that 1938 Gillette Senator, as soon as I get it straightened out, if the guy is going to say, hmm, nope, I ain't going to straighten it out, then I'm going to send it into Razor Emporium, or we'll send it into Razor Emporium and get it fixed. But, you know, the guy, I've never really heard bad stuff about his shop on, you know, any of the forums and... Um, he's got five out of five stars, good reviews, so I'm got a feeling that he's going to do what's right. Anyways, so anyhow, um, y'all take it easy. I shall see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now.